Greetings YouTube. It's March in Minnesota and we just got smacked with probably uh, 10 inches of wet snow or thereabout. Don't quote me on it, but it's uh, definitely up over the ankle amount of snow and then because it's so late in the season it's really wet and heavy. So this is the kind of stuff that is tough to move and it builds up in the bucket really fast. You know, one thing I didn't realize right away with the Mahindra is that bucket's actually about uh, three inches to the inside of the tires, maybe in total. Uh, so when you actually put this thing down, you're not covering your tire tracks, at least with the, the industrial tires. Probably not the same with the egg, because the eggs are a little thinner, deeper and thinner. But uh, it's like 25 degrees outside right now, so it's actually pretty warm, and I got my my co-pilot with me. He's in a quiet mood today. And I'm just trying to clear some of this out. I don't have to be too crazy about getting it all gone, but just enough to get it stuff. You know, it's in it's days like today for you guys in the south that, you know, maybe this is about as cold as you'd ever operate it. It does start just fine. You know, right around 20 degrees. I, I hit the glow plugs three times and I let it plug in all night and it didn't have any issue um, starting up this morning. Just a clean start. One thing though, you know, my I got the maintenance timer going off and haven't been meaning to neglect it, but um, snow keeps coming in the forecast so I can't let the tractor go to the shop just to get the maintenance stuff done. I don't have the time or really equipment to do it, especially the first one. I want somebody else to look at it in case, you know, they can see something in the fuel filter that's going on, or I guess my two biggest concerns is if there's, you know, metal shavings in the oil and there's something in my fuel filter because I do that little farm can method for uh, transporting fuel and I want to make sure it's staying clean in there. I haven't had any issues or irregularities, but... You know, you just never know. Better to get a, somebody who knows what they're talking about looking at it. Or at least the first one. After that, you know, you kind of get the trend of how the machine's doing. This thing is still a snowmobile, though. I can plow through the fresh stuff up in the yard. But out in my fields, it's uh can be a different story because the drifts go up three feet, even four feet now at some spots. And if I try to plow through a four foot drift, I can't push through it. I gotta back out and actually plow my way through it. It's a beautiful day. It's you know, today's the first day of not daylight savings or daylight savings, I don't know, but it's actually nine o'clock actual time, but if it was yesterday it'd be eight o'clock and it's a, just a beautiful day today. Can't beat it. Getting word for the deer up here. You know, they got an issue where the snow gets so deep they have a hard time uh, smelling out the food, finding it. It's been an exceptionally long winter. So yeah, we're well into March and still still getting snow, still getting some cold. Just a couple days ago it was negative 10. Still at night it would get down to negative 20. So it's been a hard winter, so I've been trying to help them out, keep them going. I've seen the herd and actually see these trees this is a crab apple tree. They don't hit this thing at all any other time of year except when the winter gets like this. And then they check that thing out every night and clean off whatever berries they can get at. I got a couple trees like that. They just don't touch until things get really bad. And you can see I'm plowing up a big old drift right now. Stuff's thick back there. She does good. That's one of the benefits of the weight of this machine is you just can keep pushing run into problems. The problem generally is just the gear. The medium is pretty dang powerful, but it isn't invincible. You definitely could over push medium. And I'm in medium one right now, just so I can keep the idle pretty low. See, too, the temperature gauge in here is already kind of picked up. It doesn't take much for it to warm up in a somewhat cold environment. We 
folks in Canada, I feel bad for you. I don't know when winter's gonna winter's gonna end for you guys. This winter this year is hard on everything, everything and everyone. Really cold, really long, lots of snow. I'm sure glad I ended up with a bigger tractor than last year for the snow. drive through this stuff with my old tractor. I think if I was for sure going to live in Minnesota the next five years, I'd definitely invest in a seven or an eight foot snow bucket just so I could move more material. My dad actually has a snow cat with a seven foot bucket. You know, horsepower, this thing's a lot more than that thing is. And gearing, it's more powerful as well because it actually has gears. And he says he can get that tool cat to push, just push snow right over the top of the snow bucket, seven foot snow bucket, and it's lighter and doesn't have as much power. So I might look at doing an eight foot. And then all this I can almost do in one pass. How's it going, Boyo? Is it sunny? You need sunglasses? Okay, whatever you say. That's pretty much it. So here's the steel that I cleaned up last year with that John Deere. Um, plan in as soon as it melts and I can get a decent picture, I'll put that on Craigslist and see if it's worth any money. If any of you guys out there know anything about scrap, let me know. The original plan was just to say, hey, come take it and I'll help you load it for nothing. Um, I don't know if it's worth something. Some of it does weigh quite a bit. There's, there's some old implements that are just iron. They might be worth something just to melt it down metal weight, but I, I have no idea. And I'm certainly not looking to make money off of it, but if it's worth something, let me know. I just didn't think it would be. A lot of it's just the chicken wire from this old hatchery here from probably 30 years ago. Most of it's probably older than me. So I would just prefer it to be gone. I'm just trying to clean up the property and make it a much nicer, much nicer place to look at it parts. I actually had to pull a lot of that right out of the woods. He just would almost bulldoze it into the tree line and then let stuff grow into it for 30 years so that John Deere had its work cut out for it because I got to yank trees out of it. Actually right there, that emptiness, because that's where a lot of the cages were and those trees were in them, I had to rip up probably 10 trees or so just to get that stuff out. You know, one thing I do notice too is once this thing really warms up and the transmission warms up, um, you can totally work in second and third gear if you want. It's got plenty of push, but right away when she starts, uh, that transmission fluid is so cold and so hard for the machine to push, you just gotta work in first for a while. And now, now I'm in second and can cruise a little bit. It doesn't change my push power. That's all I got. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for you subscribers out there. The channel's growing every month, which is awesome. Um, I still haven't got my tiller yet, and I'm, uh, oh, I'm hoping uh, that's going to come here in the next couple weeks. So I plan to do a little bit of talking about that, talking about the logic behind it and what I'm going to do, and just get your guys' thoughts. All right. Thank you.